Welcome back to the Industry Expert Series on PCB Data Management. My name is John Watson. In this episode, we're actually going to be looking at our second pillar as we're developing our PCB data management system and what that's going to take for us. In the first episode, we actually saw where it's going to take singularity. The S stood for singularity. It's going to take a single source of data, information, a single library to work from. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the second pillar, managed. And I'm not sure which is worse, working with a rogue library or working with a single library that's not managed. They're, they actually accomplish about the same thing. You end up with a bad design at the back end. Most importantly, I, I can tell you that throughout this module, we're actually, you're going to need a software package that can handle what we're going to be discussing. And I can tell you that Altium has developed a phenomenal design package that has helped us manage our PCB data. In the manage pillar, there's four categories, four areas of, of concern that we're going to be looking at. Number one is this. If your data is going to be managed, it's going to be revisioned. There has to be a revision to it. Now, there are endless revisioning systems that are out there and are available, but I can tell you that Altium has a system that allows a tailoring of that revisioning system, whatever your revisioning system is in your particular company. Personally, I, I believe in a combination of an alphanumeric setup where you actually gives you a lot more flexibility in your revisioning process. The second area of your managed uh, pillar is going to involve your life cycle. Lifecycle is a system that defines the maturity of the specific item that you're discussing or looking at. Now understand, not, not every item in your data management system will have the same life cycle. Sometimes you'll have a component, which will have a, what's called a general life cycle stages, which are new, approved, deprecating, and then obsolete. Now understand, every company is going to be different on their life cycle. A third area that you're going to have to be looking at if you're going to have a managed uh, design process or in a data that you work with will be the roles that you have. You need to be able to define who will be working on what and what access will they have. In a later episode, we're actually going to be looking in more detail regarding data management security systems and how this role can actually be used in a much better way. These various roles are involved throughout your PCB design process. There are people that actually will just need to look at data. There's other people that will actually have to change that data. The last area in this pillar of the managed area is your permissions. If the roles is who will be working, permissions is what will they be able to do? What will they be able to change? When you combine these four areas with your revisioning, your life cycle, your roles and your permissions, what happens is you begin to develop a phenomenal structure to can manage your data. You have to do that because we are constantly in a flux of change in this industry. And we have to be able to keep it under control. So that is your second pillar. Your third pillar is your A. Your architecture. There is a hotel in Coronado, California called the Hotel Dell. And this is a phenomenal hotel. It's a beautiful, beautiful hotel. It's actually one of the largest wooden structures in the United States. And if you've ever seen any photos of it, it's, it's a phenomenally beautiful hotel. It's, it's, it's a renowned for its history. It's the famous hotel that was in the, the, the classic movie with Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis, Some Like It Hot with Marilyn Monroe. Um, this, that was the hotel. But what was significant about this hotel was that it was actually built with no architectural plans. It's a very low unknown fact there. That there were no architecture plans in that entire building. It was all done by piecemeal. All done piece by piece. Now, Although it could be done, it's not recommended to try to, to build something 
as massive as a hotel with no plans. Usually the very first thing you do is you sit down and you develop your plan. And a lot of times the biggest mistake I've seen in PCB data management systems is that you try to develop your system with no plans at all, or your plans are limited because what happens is that you look at where your company is now and you develop a plan to architect your data or control your data and where you're at now. But the question for you is this, where's your company going to be 10 to 15 years from now? Well, we hope it's going to grow. We hope you have more data. We hope that you have more information. We have more uh, products. You have all that, that material. So what's important is where are you going to store all this? And that w how is it going to be organized in a way that you can easily find it and that it's just not, it, and it's usable in your product? Well, a common method to do, uh, of, of organization of your data will be this. Number one is categories. And then secondly, families. Many company vendors now are using such a system as this, such as Octopart. It has a breakdown of, of categories and families for every component. And what will be vital is the ease of use in this data. It's easy to find and it's easily expandable. I would actually, this is actually going to require some, some details though for you. It's going to actually require some organization. And what this is, is that is to be able to find something very easily in your data management system, you're going to have to have a conventional naming system. I would highly recommend for you to look at IPC 7251, which is your uh, standard for through hole components or your IPC 351, which is for surface mount components. By looking at these, it will actually give you a framework for your naming convention for your design. So it's, you can easily find things. Some of the key takeaways that I want you to, to know is your system, has have to be, your system has to be managed. You have to have your revisioning, your life cycle, your roles and your permissions set up on your designs or on your data. The third pillar being your architecture. Have an architecture, plan it out. Know how it will look. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. In the next episode, we're actually going to be finishing looking at the structure of a successful data management system and looking at the last two pillars of reviewing and tailoring. If these videos have been helpful for you, I want you to, to make sure to, to uh, share them with your colleagues. Leave your comments and, and questions that you may have. Thank you. My name is John Watson.